size. We're running a basic color scheme. So the first thing we so here I've just got a blank area, and we're going to go File, New, Project. And you'll see here you've got a database set of templates, just like we've got our C Sharp, C++, and whatnot. We have a database set of templates for which we have SQL Server. Over here in the list, we've got various project types. You can target a specific database environment. For example, if I was still working with 2005, I could pick a 2005 project, or I could do 2008, which is what we're going to do today. Now, we have different types. A database project just creates a blank project, and it doesn't walk us through the wizard. You can still do a lot of the same things, but you don't have that nice wizard-like capability. A server project is for creating server objects, such as things you might want to put in your master database. And that's a pretty advanced subject that we're not going to cover in this session. The wizard is what we're going to walk through today. The wizard gives us the ability to go do all kinds of nice reverse engineering. It asks us a lot of questions about how we want to set up our project. So let's go do it in uh, the wizard, and we'll just call the project webinar. And we'll click OK. And now we come up to our welcome screen. That's nice. We'll just click Next. Now it says, what kind of project would you like to create? And once again, it asks us, do we want a server project or a database project? Well, we're going to stick with the database project. Now it asks, how do we want to organize the files within our project? We can organize them by schema or by type of object. I personally am a big fan of database schemas. Uh, I know they're designed for security, but they're also really great for organizational purposes. So I tend to use schemas heavily, so I'm going to leave the default set of schema, and I'm even going to say include the schema in the file name, just so that when I'm looking through my lists of files, it's easy to identify what schema something belongs to. So we'll click Next, and here we have some fairly basic settings. Most of these you'll generally just leave alone. You're not going to touch these. The only one you might work with is the default schema. Within the project, whenever you go to create a new table or a new view, something like that, it will automatically prepend the name of the view you enter with whatever your default schema is. Most projects, I tend to create a default schema that is the name of the project, and I use VBO fairly rarely. But for today, we're just going to leave it set to VBO. And we'll click Next. Now, here's the really cool part. Remember a little while ago I said we could import an existing database. So we're going to come up here and we're going to import an existing schema. And I happen to have the AdventureWorks Lite version loaded on here. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the traditional AdventureWorks. Be aware, though, that there are other versions of AdventureWorks. The one I'm going to work with today is called the Lite version. It only has a handful of tables compared to the big one. And that's going to be useful today because it's going to keep our response is fairly speedy. Now, if you don't happen to have this already picked in your drop-down, you can click New Connection, and you can just go fill out this very standard-looking dialog to pick out the server name and pick to the database you want. Here are some various import options. I typically just leave these alone. And we'll come down here and click Next. Oh, let's show you down at the bottom. It says, a SQL file is created for each database object that you import, so understand that you're going to have lots and lots of SQL files out there as part of your project. And we set a maximum number of files to 1,000. I've never had that be an issue, but just be aware that if you ever needed to change this, you could do it here. So we'll click Next. And now we have some options around our deployment. And these are pretty important to understand. So if you decide to fall asleep through the rest of the seminar or go get coffee or whatever, try to hang out here with me for just a minute because this is pretty important. The first thing we have is the deployment option. We have two choices, create a deployment script or create a deployment script and go ahead and deploy it to the database. During the deployment of your database, Visual Studio will compare what you have in your project to the target database. We set the target database connection here, 
and I'm just going to use my local host and we'll leave the default database name of webinar and we'll click OK. And of course I can change my target database name here. Now in a real world scenario you would probably have AdventureWorks Lite Dev, AdventureWorks Lite Test, and AdventureWorks Lite as your production database. At each point before you do your deployment, you're going to want to come, and I'll show you where to do this in a few minutes after the post wizard, but you're going to want to compare what's in your project to what's in the target. By creating a deployment script, Visual Studio will only generate the changes needed to bring your target up to date with your current project. So let me say that again, it'll, it'll compare your target database to what's in your project and generate a simple SQL file that you can then hand off to a DBA or if you're the DBA you can then deploy that to your system. Now it's important that you change your connection before your deploys because obviously let's say you've been test you've been doing your testing you deploy the project to testing well it's already going to have everything up to date. So if you then turn around and try to deploy that same script to production nothing's going to work. You really need to make sure that you do these comparisons. Another option down here to note is always recreate database. I like to check this on during the initial stages of development when I'm still working on my local box. This just makes it easy. If I go in and make a lot of changes, uh, it just wipes those changes out and redeploys it to my project. Once though I start to work in a shared environment such as a shared team server or the test server or what have you, you want to make sure to uncheck that. If you don't do it, it's going to wipe out the work of all your coworkers and you'll be stuck buying donuts for the team for the rest of the year. Block incremental deployment if data loss might occur. This is Visual Studio's way of keeping you from shooting yourself in the foot. If you, let's say you want to drop a column, but that column has data in it, Visual Studio will stop the deploy, generate an error and say, you've got to go fix that. And it will go and you'll have to go manually and delete the data in that column before it will proceed with the deployment. So that's a very good thing to have. Uh, it keeps you safe and it makes you really think about the changes you're going to do. The final option on this screen is backup database before deployment. Hopefully you've got a DBA who will automatically just out of habit back up the database before he implements your script. But you just might want to check this on anyway just for safety. 